Hey everyone. So uh, the last video of this little series is on reshape two, which is for melting and casting data or reshaping your data. I, I may have mentioned this before in a previous video that data often needs to be in different types of formats. And I'm not just talking about file formats like Excel files or CSV files or stuff like that. I'm talking about different shapes. Uh, such as there's long form formats where there are two variables in a data frame where one of those vari variables corresponds to a value and another corresponds to a variable to which the va uh, to which the value corresponds to or like the or you could think of it as there's a variable that and one tra column tracks variables and another column tracks the values those variables take and there's also a wide form format uh, where each variable has its own column and the values of the variables are recorded as rows. And the thing is, in data analysis, often you need to go between one format of data and another. And you can see to the left uh, in, the, um, in this uh, R console that I have the empty cars data set and it's in a particular format. I would call this long form format because we have the variables MPG, cell, disp, HP, DRAT, WT, QSEC, and all these variables. Uh, and each one of those variables gets their own column. right? And, uh, in, and then in that column are going to be the values for that variable. But we could alternatively have a data set where you can imagine that we have a column that like identifies an observation. Like we would have a column identifying what type of car we're talking about. Uh, but we also have a column that says variable, and this is going, and this column will contain the values MPG, cell, disp, HP, DRAT, WT, QSEC, and so on. And then we have another column that tracks the values that those variables take. Um, you will see an example of this in a second. Uh, and uh, we went, maybe need to go between one format and another in order to work with certain software tools or because certain types of data analysis prefer one format to another. ggplot, for example, often will require that you reshape your data in order to meet the assumptions that ggplot makes about the data. So the reshape2 package is a package that provides functions for reshaping data. It comes with a couple of functions, melt and cast. Melt takes a wide form format data set and brings into long form while cast does the inverse of that taking a long form data set and bringing it into wide form uh, so maybe you remember the function stack and unstack and how i mentioned that these functions um, are kind of inverses of each other and uh, they could be understood as going between wide form and long form format uh, these, these functions are allowing us to do stuff like that too so let's uh, do a demonstration of this uh, melt function which converts wide form format data into long form format. We're going to melt the empty cars data set, and this is what results. We have uh, a variable for MPG and a variable for value, and uh, and uh, the and the variable column is tracking the variables in the data set, and the value column is tracking the values that those variables take. Uh, so if you wanted to, we could actually look at the tail of this data set. That might also be useful uh, just to kind of give you more of a sense of what's going on. Okay, uh, so uh, Melt's default behavior is to assume that all the variables in your data set with numeric data are variables that you want to, to flatten, essentially, or to stack up um, into this uh, very long matrix. Notice that this matrix has 352 rows. Uh, which is uh, if we were to look at the dimensions of the original data empty cars data set, uh, it had um, let's see 32 rows. So it, it resulted in way more rows. So if we wanted to be a bit more uh, specific about what we want to melt, uh, we can pass arguments to the ID variable. And what that will do is make it so that when the melting operation is done, those variables that we've identified with ID don't get melted. So they're going to stick around and all the other variables are going to get um, melted into this variable and value column. And as a result of this, uh, the gear and carb uh, 
uh, information is going to get repeated across rows because the main reason why we would do this id operation is so that we can say which variables together identify observations because as you can imagine if we have only variable and value it may be difficult to recover which cars these are talking about and in principle with the id column we could say that there are specific columns that we want to preserve because those are identifiers for which observation we're working with. Now it's not ex entirely clear from this because it's not entirely clear that gears and uh, carb would be uh, actually identifying individual cars. But if we were to say, create an empty cars two data set, uh, so empty cars two is going to be uh, the empty cars data set. And then we're going to uh, add on a new column to this data, uh, to this data set. So we got empty cars, uh, so empty cars and our new column will be called, uh, uh, so we'll, we'll just call it car and that will be the row names of the data set. So empty cars. I hope this works because this is completely live. All right, that worked. Um, so now we have an additional column that's tracking, uh, the car type, whereas the, you know, the row names were actually completely forgotten when we started working with uh, uh, Melt, which is unfortunate. So if we, let's actually now uh, say this will be the empty cars two data set. So a more useful application of this ID variable would be Melt uh, empty cars two and ID equals car. So and to basically say we are identifying the car. And we're going to go ahead and just look at the first few rows of this by piping this into the head function. Oh, object car not found. Oh, right, 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 right. This needs to be in quotes. Uh, so car, because we're talking about a column name. Okay, now we can I, we can use this car variable to say, okay, uh, the, the MPG for the Mazda RX-4 is going to be 21. And we can actually recover the individual observations this way. Uh, so, um, if you, if you didn't like, for example, the naming of these columns, because we got very specific names, car, variable, value, uh, if we didn't like the names variable and value for those respective columns, we could set variable name equals something else and value name equals something else to rename those columns automatically, uh, when we do this melting operation. Uh, so it's pretty easy to melt a data set. Um, the the tricky part is casting it back from long form format to wide form format. So there are a couple functions, dcast and acast, which are responsible for casting data to wide form format from long form format. Uh, dcast will return a data frame and acast returns an array like object. So vectors, matrices, arrays, and so on. We'll be looking at dcast in this video because acast is basically the same. It just returns uh, like an array instead of a data frame. So here's a pretty general dcast call. We would do dcast. Here's the data frame. We have a formula that describes uh, how, like what values correspond to what. And then we have value var equals uh, value, which is identifying which variable in the data set is the value variable, which by default is value because that's what uh, melt does. So df, the first parameter is the data set to cast. f is a formula describing how the casting is to be done. And the value of r tells dcast which variable in, DTA, D, in df uh, is the variable containing values. Uh, so the parameter f is the most important uh, parameter we need to talk about. So it generally has the form ID tilde variable, where ID is the combination of variables that together compose, uh, that together identify observations in the data set. Um, and there could be multiple observations, like, like one observation individually will not identify a row, but uh, multiple uh, observations together will. Uh, vari so the variable is going to be what variables are going to become columns in this data set. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, ID could be a combination. Um, so for example, an imaginary data set, uh, 
the variables data time, data and a uh, day and time could uniquely identify observations. So, so if that's the case, then our uh, uh, formula F would resemble day plus time tilde variable, basically saying that these uh, columns together are going to identify a unique row. Uh, it is possible still that if you don't necessarily have unique rows or maybe don't even want unique rows, uh, that uh, multiple observations will be mapped to the same row. Uh, so if that's going to be the case, R is going to need to know what to do with the observations get, that get mapped to the same cell in this data frame. So the fund aggregate parameter in DCAST is going to be the parameter that tells us how observations get combined. For example, by default, it is length, which basically means that this parameter is going to count how many observations got mapped to the same uh, cell. Whereas uh, we could instead have some other means of aggregating uh, observations that get mapped to the same cell, such as mean or median or sum. So let's see some examples. Here's a fictitious data set. Uh, where we have some ID variables uh, and uh, we have uh, the variable, we have variable and value where this is in lo long form format. Let's uh, go ahead and just look at the first few rows of this. Uh, so we have an ID variable that cor that's saying which observations uh, we are talking about. We have this variable column that's identifying which uh, variables we're talking about with each of these values. Um, we could turn this into the corresponding long form data set with DCAST and the call will be DCAST. Here's the data set DF and ID var tilde variable means that ID var will identify rows. Notice that there's only gonna be one row for each one and variable is going to identify columns. Uh, all right, so uh, if we wanted to uh, let's suppose now that we have a new version of this data set. Let's, uh, let's look at the first few rows of this data set. Uh, supposedly, uh, we're going to say that both ID bar and ID bar two are identifying, uh, ro are, are identifying rows. Uh, so uh, now if these are, these are together identifying stuff, there could potentially be collisions still when we when we're using these variables so when we aggregate observations we should aggregate with the mean function and this is what results so we end up actually these being the means of each uh, observation that got mapped to that same cell like for example uh when id var one and id var two are both zero or let's say they're both one that corresponds to this observation right here okay so you can learn more about reshape two at the uh, mentioned links, which are, uh, let's see, if you uh, like, this might be a better, easier way to read them. Here's one link, and here's another link. These are also available on the course webpage if you go looking for the uh, nice enhanced lecture notes there. But uh, this is where you can learn more about this package, which is again an important package because reshaping is one of those things that you're going to be doing a number of times if you stay using R and doing statistics and working with data sets. Okay, so that concludes this uh, series of uh, videos on uh, uh, McGritter, Dippler, Reshape, and uh, we will continue on with uh, other statistical topics. So I will uh, see you there in those videos.